Thank you so much. I want to welcome everybody to Emerge Americas. It is my absolute pleasure to be, well, the leader of the Small Business Administration. When President Obama asked me to take this cabinet position, he said, I just want you to do three things. I want you to run an effective SBA. I want to make sure that you are a voice for small businesses and that you help small businesses go to the next level. I said to him, I'm a small business woman whose small business, a bank, serves small businesses every day. So I have, feel, I have been in your shoes. I feel your pain. There are some really big highs, but there's some really low lows. And so that's why I'm here to kick off National Small Business Week this morning. Please join us in honoring all of you today, please. We want to do two things this week, very simple agenda. One is to celebrate entrepreneurship, to honor the work that you do, to celebrate the contributions that you make to our society, recognizing that today's economy is stronger than it has been in a long, long time, folks. We've had 61 months of consecutive job growth. We have had an uptick in the Dow Jones. When President Obama took office, it was hovering under 9,000, and now it's hovering over 18,000. Remarkable, remarkable achievement. So really proud of the accomplishment. But when the Secretary of Labor enters the room and says, we are now experiencing incredible job growth, I get to say that it's the small business community that's creating two-thirds of that job growth. So again, this is a salute to you. The second thing is it, as, is it what it is, is to remind Americans and remind people around the world that in order to support you, we need to make sure that we're shopping small and that we're shopping local to assure that we're lifting your businesses up every day. So I hope that as you are getting ready for Mother's Day, for Father's Day, or enjoying this graduation season, if you have somebody graduated, that you are indeed shopping for moms, dads, and grads. I'm pleased to tell you that uh, yesterday I had a very, very interesting day over at Venture Hive. How many of you were at Venture Hive yesterday? All right, well, let's see. Uh, only one person raised their hand. I know I saw a whole lot more of you than that. Okay, very good. And I know that there was a great competition, and I just wanted to thank the judges, the mentors, but mostly the risk-taking entrepreneurs who were there. As we said, we know that some of you are going to come away a little richer. Uh, but more, all of you will come away richer in terms of the relationships that you will make. And so congratulations to you. We know today that investors are looking for innovative companies and concepts that haven't been overshopped, and you have come to the right place. Again, I want to thank all of you for the hard work that you're doing. It's no accident that we find ourselves here in Miami. Miami is the Ellis Island of our generation. It's a city where minority-owned businesses are in the majority and immigrants are the beating heart of the local economy. The truth is, we're all immigrants, with the exception, of course, of the Native Americans, the first born here in this nation. None of us are truly from America, but all of us are of America, precisely because our journeys, our families, took to get here. It may have been your parents or your grandparents or their parents and grandparents, but someone wanted you to be in America. That's the thread that binds us all. In Dr. King's immortal words, he said, we may have all come on different ships, but we're all in the same boat now. The genius of America is that we are in a state of constant reinvention. We welcome newcomers who are hungry, who are driven, and who are hardworking, imaginative. We know the immigrant journey is not an easy one, it rarely is. It takes courage. It takes a belief in yourself, a, self, a sense of self-reliance, to leave your loved ones, all of your belongings, your neighbors, your culture, and your native country all behind. A yearning to learn new things, meet new people, and discover new ways. That's right, it takes an explorer's heart. A willingness to start from scratch, build something, in many cases, build something big. In short, it's the entrepreneurial spirit. 
And that's why, on behalf of President Obama, I'm here to honor all of you, the melting pot of our country, and to make this the official kickoff of National Small Business Week. You heard our theme is dream big, start small. That's what the agency is all about. To level set, for those of you who are not familiar with the SBA, we call it the three C's. We have one of the most important, largest network of counselors across the country that know how to start a micro business and also take you to scale, the gazelles. We know that it's important to give you contracts after you have your business plan in place and you've got your, your program all intact, your licenses, you want business. The federal government is the largest procurer in the world, and we direct 23 percent, nearly a quarter of the federal spend to small businesses, mandated by Congress. And then third, you say, now I need capital to fuel that contract. The SBA has billions and billions of dollars in government debentures. Some people have a wealthy uncle, and in the SBA you have Uncle Sam, who will come in and stand for you as a guarantor. We have helped grow so many entrepreneurs around the world who have started here in the United States. Some of you have, may have heard of them because they have grown some of the most successful companies mankind has ever seen. A little inventor came to us very early, early on and grew a company called Apple. Another one called uh, Fred came to us very early on and created a shipping company called FedEx. Another gentleman came to us and created a sports apparel company that convinced young athletes that they could fly, and that company is called Nike. The SBA has helped finance these companies and when they were just starting out. We have so many more stories like that. We helped Intel, we helped America Online, Costco, Ben & Jerry's, Under Armour. I love seeing these stories and hearing hearing about their journeys. It's one of the pleasures that we find at SBA. So again, we hope that you will come to us and allow us to partner with you. We have, uh, I understand somebody in the audience, I hope that he is here. I heard that we have one here that we recently assisted called IMEX Paper Fund. It's a new 42,000 square foot warehouse here in Medley. And this, uh, this company is well on its way. Their CEO, Luis Tome, has turned his startup into a company generating $20 million in revenue. Are you here, Luis? Well, they told me he might be here. <laughs> but we're really impressed that already he's got paper mills in 10 countries and customers on four continents. So we are going to be naming him the uh, exporter of the year for the SBA. So again, in their absence, congratulations to them. Thanks to companies like this, we are growing optimism and growth in our economy. We're so pleased to tell you that the rising home prices have helped li lift nearly four million households out of negative equity and back above water because of the job creation that you are all helping to generate here. You heard Janet Yellen who said that she credits small businesses for powering our economy, but we have to work together as a team here. I know that now, with you here in the room, I'm assured that we all understand that today's commerce is global. The small businesses have to understand how to navigate through this international marketplace. And so I convened the first ever, the first ever global ministerial where I was able to convene all of my counterparts around the world. With the assistance of the Kauffman Foundation, we had 150 nations show up. And we talked about what it is to fail and some countries had more advanced ability to file for bankruptcy than others. And we know today that we have to promote failure. If you're not failing, you're not pushing the envelope. You can't disrupt, you can't innovate if you don't have an ecosystem that supports failure. And so I was really pleased to hear the, the reaction to our programs that we had here. Morocco asked us if we would help them design their bankruptcy laws. Ghana asked us if we would help them stand up an SBA. Korea brought employees in to learn about how to replicate our programs. Brazil is, is working with us, so we invite countries all the time so that you have safer rules. But more importantly, President Obama is pushing so hard to make sure 
that the TPP passes so we can have the Trans-Pacific Partnership and we can have proper rules of engagement that we all understand. And it's the first time in a trade agreement that we have an SME chapter, a small business enterprise chapter, that allows us to resolve disputes in an orderly fashion. At the end of the day, what we're really exporting is American values when we talk about our climate and environmental standards, our labor standards. And so I hope that you'll engage in the conversation and urge Congress to help us pass that. The face of entrepreneurship is changing. And in Miami today, we see the future, a gateway to global commerce and global investment, entrepreneurial energy across the region, as well as Latin America. More businesses today are owned by women by veterans, by immigrants, African, Hispanic, Native, and Asian Americans, and our LGBT entrepreneurs. As an example, Hispanics are now the fastest growing group of small businesses, numbering more than three and a half million strong. Hispanics contribute nearly a half trillion dollars to the nation's economy each year. Yes, you all know my story. When I um, when I got here to America, I, after a, a couple of years, I, I wrote to my grandmother and said, I'm now in third grade and I've just become the milk monitor. And she said, it's not the titles that you have, it's what you do with the titles you have that matters. And so indeed, I've always taken her words to heart. So when I became California Secretary of Transportation, instead of pulling together the billions of dollars that we were gonna spend on the east span of the Oakland Bay Bridge, I debundled the work to make sure that smaller and smaller businesses could benefit from that work. And we were able to create so many local jobs. But so many businesses said to me, but we don't know when you put out that work. So we knew we needed to counsel them. And then they said, but we can't get a surety bond. So then I went out and visited with people so that they could get bonded. And then they said, but you take too long to pay. So we put a program in place to make sure that we could help uh, small businesses by paying them within 40 days. And then they said, but I can't get access to capital to do that work, to fund the line, the working line that I need. And so then I pulled the banks in. When the president called me and asked me to do this work, and I saw that what we do here is provide surety bonds, that we put in place a program to make sure that small businesses get paid in 15 days, that we do the counseling, the contracting, and the access to capital, I knew that it all made sense and that we're now making it smart, bold, and accessible, that we're deploying smart systems to be more efficient with you. We have now launched, I'm pleased to say, our SBIR program. How many of you know about our SBIR program? Small Business and Innovation Research. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, initiative. We take several percentage points from every department that has a research program in the federal government. And what we do is we steer it to small businesses. And we learn now that you as entrepreneurs have a new value. And that is that yes, you wanna make money, yes, you wanna make profits, but what you wanna do is change the world. You wanna have social impact in the process. And that's why you believe in impact investing. I wanna tell you that we met one young person who came to us and asked for an SBIR grant. And so he was given the grant and he came up with something that was very interesting. He saw that our seniors were now trembling when they got Parkinson's. How many of you have somebody in your family that has a tremble? And he came up with this spoon that creates a special suspension so that when you're eating the peas, the peas stay in the spoon and you can eat with dignity. So now our seniors with Parkinson's have a solution, a way to sit with grace and join us at the dinner table. This is what SBIR does, and this is what you are doing around the world. Congratulations to Anum Patak. Congratulations to him for this. Just recently, another young man came to us and said that he wanted to disrupt. He saw that styrofoam lasted forever, 500 years maybe, and so he took mushrooms that are photo and biodegradable, and he said, I'm gonna create a new styrofoam from this, and as a result, now when you use his styrofoam, you place it back out in the, in the uh, open and it becomes compost and grows new things for the future. That's what our SBIR program does. 
And so I'm pleased to tell you that we're taking the combination of the ability that we have to empower you. So many of you said because you speak Spanish and you wanted to do this work, that you wanted to come to our site, but it wasn't responsive to you. So today I have another announcement, and that is that today we light up what will become one of the first federal agencies with a completely bilingual website in Spanish. Is that wonderful? And you know how those, uh, those uh, commercials go, but wait, there's more. I want to share with you that in fact, uh, we have another initiative. In this SBIR program that I just designed, we wanted to make sure that you could benefit from the innovations of others who came prior. And so what we're doing is we're looking at, we're looking at ways in which we can now share with you big data, data that shares with you what it is that somebody else has already invented. You know, we always have an idea, and then later we find out that somebody already had that idea. And so I'm delighted to say that, in, in fact, today we also light up the new SBIR website that now is much more efficient, cleaner, and has a lot more data so that you can build your innovations on top of that. Let me just close with this thought. That is that we all come from different places, as I said, and my story is no different than yours. As I mentioned, when I came here from Mex Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, I couldn't speak a word of English. But as I navigated, navigated, and finally made some progress, writing to my grandmother at every turn, she said, although we've been a family of migrant workers in America, the social mobility that exists there, if you work hard and bring others along, Someday, mija, you might be able to work in an office and be a secretary. <laughs> the good Lord heard her and allowed me to hold office and to be a cabinet secretary. But that is the beauty. Thank you so much. That is the beauty of, of what entrepreneurship does. It changes the arc of our lives. And so for me, having started three businesses, I can tell you that entrepreneurship is the most powerful force to lift people out of poverty, as the president says. So I'm delighted to join with you to salute all that you are doing. And we are all ready. We stand ready to partner with you. Our SBA team around the country is not your grandfather's SBA. I think that you'll see that we are now smart, bold, and accessible, and creating new relationships in new ways. An announcement that I made last week, and I'll end with this one, I'm so proud of SBA, you can tell, uh, is LINK. Some of you go to Match.com to find the date of your life, maybe somebody who will be with you forever. And we took that technology and said, how do we use about the two million hits that we get a month, and we understand that mostly they're looking for capital, how do we direct them to a banker? And so we've used that technology, and now you can go on our site, L-I-N-C, for capital, LINK, and you now go on and talk about your capital needs, and now bankers compete for your business. So we're putting you in the driver's seat. We'll continue to innovate with your support. We know that you will help us push the, push the ball forward, not just on banking new systems that we can deploy. You're gonna be uh, ones that are gonna empower our strategic allies and the US with new advances in cybersecurity and making sure that we have technology that allows us not to put so many men and women on the ground in warfare. We're going to also make sure that we're advancing humanity by addressing uh, precision medicine, and we'll continue to work with you on these innovations so that we can continue to change the world. Martin Luther King had one of my favorite quotes, and he said, what good is it to be able to sit at an integrated counter if you can't afford to buy the hamburger. We're gonna team up with you so that we're not gonna go back to buy the hamburger, we're gonna go back to buy the restaurant. We're building ownership in America and around the world and that's the way we're gonna continue to lift people out of poverty and stamp out tyranny, despotism, and all of the heinous crimes taking place that we see, such egregious actions taking place that we all see. We're gonna show people what we're for God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much. Salute to all of you.
Let's continue the conversation. My uh, Twitter address is mcs4biz, and I hope that you'll follow our hashtag, which is Dream Small Biz. God bless you again, and Godspeed to all of you in your successes and inventions. Thank you so much.